into my kit room and I'm really excited today to be talking about my bike and my setup for cycling adventures. Now, this is take like 15, I need to get this under 10 minutes so I'm on the stopwatch today. So I've got three things I just want to clarify before I start. The first one being I'm pretty new to cycle touring. I've only been doing it about three years and I've only been on three proper uh, cycle adventures and the way that I've set up my bike has changed dramatically in that time and that's just from doing research and following other people and just picking up tips and tricks and I just wanted to share them with you today. Uh, secondly is not all the equipment on my bike right now is what I would probably uh, advise people to buy so um, what I'm going to do is uh, do an, uh, a blog that goes along with this vlog uh, which outlines the kit I would actually buy if I had the money to be able to buy it just so people don't waste money um, buying the wrong stuff and uh, thirdly I think quite importantly the great one of the great things about cycle touring is just how personal it is to each and every rider and some people like having lots of panniers they like traveling shorter distances and they like having luxuries and and, and that's a brilliant way to cycle tour and some people like me like to get up early, pedal all day and try and see how far they can get uh, and therefore the way I pack reflects that, you know, and there's people way more extreme than me uh, so there is just, it's one of the great things about cycle touring. Anyway, this is my setup which I want to share with you today and hopefully it helps. So the bike I've gone for is a Genesis Quadifer 20. I bought this back in 2018 and uh, it's been a great bike so far. I really enjoy riding it, very comfortable um, and uh, it's performed exactly how I wanted it to. The only adjustment I've made is that I've upgraded the wheels uh, just because I was finding I was having problems with spokes and stuff uh, popping and that's not ideal when you're in the middle of nowhere. So uh, at the moment I've moved up to some Mavic All Roads um, the things to bear in mind when you're upgrading your wheels is one, what your budget is, two, um, kind of what kind of terrain you're going to be on, I've gone for kind of gravel-esque kind of wheels, and three is what weight capacity can they take, so these wheels, um, I've got 120 kilo kind of max weight, so you have to think how much do you weigh, how much does the bike weigh, how much does your kit weigh, and how much is your water, and then you put all that together and that will allow you to get the wheels that are probably going to be right for you. Um, in tyres, I use the Schwabe Marathon Pluses. These are great for the kind of a cycle touring I'm doing, which is mostly on asphalt, uh, so uh, not quite needing off-road tyres. Uh, but I am looking to get more into that the more I get kind of addicted to this form of transport. Um, then uh, there is the baggage. So as I said, I used to be a pannier man and now I'm kind of bags on bike kind of guy. Uh, I have three main bags, a couple of auxiliary bags and um, the, one of the things I think that, to bear in mind is when you're packing is don't buy big bags and fill them, decide what you need and then find the bags that will take that equipment, that way you're restricting what you need rather than taking excess stuff. Um, and also think about how often you need the stuff that you're going to be packing and that should help determine where you put it on the bike. So I have uh, a saddle bag that sits here off the back of the bike and uh, this is what I generally use for like, is it like the boot of a car. It's where I just shove stuff. Um, they've got a little bit of extra capacity for um, probably mostly food uh, and that kind of stuff I keep in the back. Then I have a frame bag. This one doesn't even fit this bike. Uh, I've had to do some jiggery pokery but it somehow manages to fit. And, and here I keep kind of stuff I need for the day and more precious stuff. So this is where I've got my power bank, it's where I've got my snacks, it's where I've got my puncture repair kit. Uh, all that kind of stuff is here just so it's quickly accessible. Then on the front I have a handlebar bag and this is basically my suitcase. This is where all my clothes are, it's where I got my kind of warm weather clothes, warm up clothes for in the evenings and full length clothes. Uh, it's where I got my waterproofs uh, for weather if it rains. Um, so that's all in here and it's kind of stuff that you get out at the beginning and the end of each day so it's kind of more closed away. Uh, my recent addition is buying these kind of front, front fork uh, shelves. Uh, these ones are metal ones from Passport and uh, the only thing that I, for this bike, is I've only got one bolt attachment here 
which means I'm having to use uh, cable ties and the straps that come to keeping the bag on, I take them round the fork just to give it a bit of extra kind of uh, security. Um, now I've got one of these on each side. This side is my sleeping bag and then on the other side I have a similar bag which is basically where I keep my cooking stuff. Um, so everything cooking is in one bag, sleeping bag, uh, just so when you're coming to unpack at the night everything is very easy to get out. Uh, in terms of uh, tents, I've been using a MSR Hubba Hubba two-man tent, which is great on the front. Uh, however, it's just quite big. So for my next trip, I'm going to try the MSR Carbon Reflex 1, which is only 600 grams. So I'm just going to give that a test to see how that works. There are advantages and disadvantages between the two. Uh, the advantage of the Hubba Hubba is that you can set it up without tent pegs. So if you are on concrete or something, you can still set up your tent. Um, but this one's far smaller and far lighter. We'll see. Uh, it's all about natural progression into what's best. Uh, and then on the front, I, I'm a big fan of having carabiners all over my kit. I've got them here, here, I've got them on the back, uh, just for clipping on things like dry bags. So this is just in case I need, if I'm going out over a longer kind of bit of road, I can take some extra food and that kind of stuff. Um, and then I have my GPS tracker. I use a Garmin InReach. That's just in case anything goes wrong, I've got a form of communication no matter what the mobile signal is. Then on the handlebars, I use a little action cam which moves around so I can video where I am. And also, I quite, act, quite like having it on a clip so you can unclip it and then clip it back on. Uh, and then for my mobile phone, I'm using a quad lock, uh, which seems to be one that people like. It's nice and easy. Uh, so that I'm giving a trial, trial at the moment. Uh, for lights, uh, there's the, I use the Lazine 1300 XXL. Now, I don't like having too much stuff here, and I've already got a lot, so I kind of keep my light back here, and then when I need it in the evening, I move it forward to the front. I also got the Strip 300, which is here, uh, and it seems like a weird place to, to have it, but when it's flashing at night, it does actually give off a lot of light. And then I have another light here, I just don't want to lose this one, so that's more secure. Here gives me an extra flashing light, so I'm very visible. Then when it comes to water, uh, I've got two water, uh, water bottles on cages here. You have to look at what the your kind of clearance between the wheel is. So I've only got a small bottle. And then for riding, I really like the Raid Light bottle here because it's got this straw which you can have between your teeth while you're riding. Now, if you're going out into uh, places where you're not going to get water, then I thoroughly recommend a Hydro Pack. Uh, three litre seeker, which just looks like this, packs down small, is that big, it's got little places here, you can strap it onto the front of your bike and that gives you an extra three litres of water um, without too much hassle. Um, when it comes to power, you can get dynamos to go in the front, front hub, I just see that as something else that can go wrong and that's purely because I've just not used them yet, I need to become more comfortable with them. So at the moment, what I've actually done is got a Falcon 21 from Power Travel, uh, attached some carabiners to it and some cable ties and I've worked out how to strap it round the back of this bag and then I can run a wire down into my power bank so the whole time I'm cycling my battery is charging in here. Um, that is my bike setup in under 10 minutes. If you want to watch any videos uh, from some of the cycling trips I've done, then go to youtube.com slash jamieisrunning. There's a nine part series of cycling across South America. If you want to see the Bolivia stuff, which is amazing, it starts at episode five. I also done a little a kind of 30 minute video for cycling from Melbourne to Darwin in Australia. I hope this was useful. If you have any questions, send me a message and the blog will give the accompanying full details of all the different bits of kit and some alternative kind of different setups that you could use. Right. Look forward to next time.